Hey guys, it's John here from Sunny Drive Studio. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're gonna do something kind of casual, fun, and relaxing, and that is go through my entire guitar collection. So I hope this will be a fun little tour of my collection. And uh, yeah, I have a bunch of guitars here, about 27 guitars or so. So there's plenty of guitars to go through. So let's just get started right away. This is the first guitar that we're gonna take a look at today. And this is my Schecter PT Apocalypse guitar. I already did a full demo slash review video on this guitar, so do look that up if you're interested. I'll put a link up here as well. Um, yeah, it's a great guitar. It's, uh, you know, your kind of Telecaster-like shape, a kind of modern take on a Telecaster. And it has this cool post-apocalyptic look, which is really nice. The previous owner put another pick guard on here, a black one actually, and that one also looks pretty cool. I know you guys really enjoyed that because the comments in the demo review video really demonstrated that you guys enjoyed the look of that. But I decided to put the original uh, pick guard on there again and I think this also looks really cool. It fits the design of the guitar. So this is a standard scale guitar with a scale length of 25 and a half inches I think. It has locking tuners, a very smooth neck with a very slim profile so it's a very fast playing guitar. It has a nice and black ebony board, looks really cool. The frets are really well done. The body is swamp ash, I think. So it has a really nice and resonant sound, which uh, I really like. And these pickups are really cool too. I think these are the Schecter Apocalypse pickups. They're very hot and they sound very angry and pissed off. So they're great for styles like metal. They have a kind of scooped sound with plenty of top end and bite and plenty of bottom end. Really cool and unique sounding guitar. Okay, so this is the next guitar in my collection another Tele type guitar. In fact, this is a Fender Telecaster, but this is the Jim Root model. It's a very cool looking guitar. It's very much a workhorse of a guitar. I really like how it plays and how it sounds and just has a very nice, you know, elegant feel, look and uh, sound to it as well. So we've got this mahogany body, a uh, satin white finish. It wears very nicely, but uh, mine is still very pristine and new looking. An ebony board, a 25 and a half inch scale, I think, just the Fender standard Tele scale length. Locking tuners, EMG pickups, a single volume control, very simple, just a three-way selector switch over here. Yeah, I just really love the simplicity of this guitar and I like the fact that it's a modern take on a Telecaster but with a very sort of stylized metal look. So I think that Fender and Jim Root did a great job on these because they're just very cool guitars. Made in Mexico, of course, so not in the USA, but uh, still a great guitar. As I said, it sounds great, it feels great, it looks great. The only thing that I'd say that is not entirely perfect on this guitar is that it does have a little bit of fret sprout going on on the sides here. But other than that, it's uh, an absolutely gorgeous guitar. The next guitar in my collection is my American Fender Performer Series Telecaster. This really is my classic Telecaster with the two single coil pickups, just the classic Telecaster design with this beautiful satin finish as well. This one has the Yosemite pickups and they sound really good in my opinion. They do have that classic Telecaster sound. Uh, yeah, what's special about this guitar? It's just a very classic design. Maple neck, of course, alder body, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it feels great, it plays great. It's very resonant as well. One small point of criticism that I would give this guitar is that it did have some fret sprout going on when I just got the guitar, just as the Jim Root uh, Telecaster. But I took care of that myself and now it feels nice and smooth. So yeah, a more affordable American-made Telecaster, but it's a great guitar. It does everything that you need from a basic Telecaster. So uh, yeah, very happy with this one. Okay, so now we're gonna make a jump to something a bit more crazy. This is my Ibanez M80M, the Meshuga 8-string signature model. And this is probably one of the more crazy guitars in my collection. Because not only is this guitar um, an 8-string guitar, with 8 strings obviously, but this one also has a very long scale length. So the scale length on this guitar is 29.4 inches long. So that's a very long scale length, even for an 8-string guitar. But it does mean that it has a lot of clarity on the low notes. So that's what this guitar excels at. It's one of the best 8-string guitars that I've ever played. It has a very unique sound. It has a very aggressive and punchy sound. Uh, a sound that you can instantly recognize when you hear it in a mix. And the Lundgren pickup over here is also very nice sounding. It really complements this guitar very well. It's just great for that Meshuga 8-string tone. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm a huge Meshuggah fan, and that's one of the reasons why I got this guitar, because those guys really pioneered that eight-string sound that we all strive to get, basically, and this guitar really delivers on that front. I love the simple design with the one pickup and just the two controls over here, even though I never really use tone controls. The body was made out of ash and the neck out of maple with some walnut stripes, I think, I'm not entirely sure. This one was built in Indonesia, but it's a fine guitar. It's very resonant and it plays great. I always put elixir strings on all my guitars and this eight string is no exception. The only thing that's different about uh, the eight string models is that I use a bass string usually for the low uh, F on this guitar. So this is a 0.70 bass string from Elixir. Yeah, I really love this guitar and I should use it a lot more often in my videos. So stay tuned for more content with this amazing beast. Okay, now we're gonna move on to my ESP LTD Stefan Carpenter models. I have about five of those uh, models. You know, I really like the guitars that he and ESP have come up with. And I'm also quite the Deftones fan, so that obviously also plays a part. So this is the second eight string guitar in my collection. And this thing is also very unique and very cool. Uh, I did a standalone demo review video on this guitar as well. So do look that up if you're interested. I'll put a link up here as well. So yeah, eight strings, but this one has a shorter scale length than the Meshuga one. This has a scale length of 27 inches, which is a more standard scale length for eight string guitars, especially for production eight string guitars. It does make this guitar a little bit better suited for leads and stuff like that. So it plays really nicely. The action is very nice and low. It's very nicely playable. It has locking tuners and it has this beautiful red sparkle finish. Very cool and unique look. And this one is actually a neck through eight string guitar. And that's also something that I really enjoy in guitars. And uh, it's not something that you see a whole lot with eight string production models. And this one has the Stefan Carpenter Fishman pickups in it as well. And they are also quite unique sounding. I tend to stick with the active voicing the most on the bridge pickup because that sounds the most balanced to my ears. But you've also got that passive voicing, which is kind of cool for versatility as well. So yeah, mahogany body, maple neck, ebony board, locking tuners, very cool finish, very cool sound. This one sounds a bit more guttural and girthy than the Meshuggah guitar. The Meshuggah guitar has a lot of bark and clarity to it. And this one has a bit more of a deeper sound and that has to do with the scale length, the body woods, and also of course with uh, the pickups and stuff like that. But it's also a great sounding guitar. So if you're interested in more information about this model, definitely check out my full demo review. So yeah, a cool guitar that I also need to use a lot more often on the channel. So the next guitar is also an ESP LTD Stefan Carpenter model. And this one is the SCT-607B to be exact, uh, a baritone seven string guitar. So this one has the same scale length as the eight string, but this one obviously has seven strings. And this one is uh, equipped with EMG pickups instead of the Fishman's. So Stefan Carpenter used to have EMGs in most of his models and he has now switched over to the Fishman's. But these are also great sounding, just a more classic active metal sound. So this is basically the, the sort of Telecaster model and I really like the, the elegant look of this one. It's also a neck through guitar, so that's really, really cool. We've got an ebony board, an alder body, if I'm correct, not entirely sure on that, could also be mahogany, but I think it's alder. Got some beautiful binding over here, a very uh, smooth neck, locking tuners over here. This one was built in Korea, just as the, the red one. Yeah, I don't know what else to say on this guitar. I also did a proper demo review of this guitar and I'll put a link up here as well for you to check out. Um, it has a lot of cool tones in it and can sound really guttural and nasty as well. Kind of similar to the red eight string, but it does do its own thing. It's quite a heavy guitar as well. And it does sound very heavy. So a very cool guitar that I also need to use more often on the channel. So I will do that in the future, trust me. Cool, let's move on to the next guitar. Okay, so the next one is also an ESP LTD Stefan Carpenter model, obviously. And I really like the modern look of this one. I mean, when I first saw this model, I knew that I really needed to have this because it just looks so cool to me. This has a purple satin finish. So it's also a seven string baritone guitar. So it's kind of similar to the black Telecaster model in that regard. It has the same scale length, so 27 and a half inches. But this one is equipped with a single pickup. This is the Fishman uh, Stefan Carpenter Fluence. Again, 
but uh, the red one had two, this one only has one, and I really do enjoy the simplicity and elegance of that as well. Just as all the other Stefan Carpenter models that I own, this is also a neck through guitar, so it sounds very solid. And because of the satin uh, finish, this one feels very smooth to play as well. The action is nice and low. I love everything about this guitar. It sounds great, it plays great, and it looks absolutely amazing. So yeah, definitely a killer guitar. Probably one of my favorites, especially for the modern high gain seven string baritone stuff. Very cool guitar. And I will also feature this guitar more on the channel in the future if I only had more time. Okay, let's move on to the next guitar. Okay, so this is another seven string baritone Stefan Carpenter LTD model. And this is sort of the older version of the purple one. This guitar obviously has a lot of similar features to the purple guitar or even the red one. But this one is equipped with a rosewood fretboard instead of ebony. And this one also has the EMG pickups instead of the Fishman's. This one has silver hardware going on and again 27 inches uh, for the scale length so it's a baritone guitar as well plays nice and uh, fast so the action is nice and low just as with all my esp ltd guitars those guitars are just built very well overall i think this one has mahogany wings on the body i'm not entirely sure a maple neck of course yeah um, and the funny thing is in 2005 or something, uh, I was in New York for the first time, and that's where I bought my very first ever baritone or baritone seven string guitar. And it was this model actually. So uh, that's where I bought my first seven string baritone guitar in uh, New York. Unfortunately, I sold that one years ago, and that one was the maple version actually. So that one had quite a unique sound to it uh, because yeah, the entire thing was made out of maple. It's something that you don't see very often. But I got rid of that one and a couple of years ago I saw this one new for a very good price. So I grabbed it and I'm very happy to have this model in my collection again. This is sort of the original, you know, the OG Stefan Carpenter baritone seven string guitar. So a very cool piece. Now let's move on to the next guitar, the final Stefan Carpenter installment in my collection. So as I said, the uh, final Stefan Carpenter guitar in my collection, this is the SC20, just the standard six string model with the standard skill length. I think it's 25 and a half inches long. I did a full demo review of this guitar as well. I'll put a link up here. It's a great guitar. And in that demo review video, I tell a funny story about how this guitar was played by Stefan Carpenter himself, actually in the ESP promo video. So this is kind of a prototype guitar because the serial number is very interesting. It says SC2000A, so that's a unique serial number, and it doesn't even say where it's been made. So I assume it was made in Korea. Could have been Indonesia as well, I'm not sure, but it's a great guitar nonetheless. Also a neck through design, maple neck, and all their body wings, I think. Uh, yeah, rosewood fretboard, glow in the dark side dots, locking tuners, and this one is equipped with passive pickups. So this is the only Stefan Carpenter model that I have with passive pickups. And we've got the Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge, a very cool sounding humbucker with a ton of bite and clarity and a lot of punch, a kind of classic sounding pickup, but also very good for modern styles, great for metal and stuff like that. And then we've got these ESP design pickups in here. This single coil neck pickup is actually very nice sounding. It's great for clean tones. So yeah, Overall, a very, very nice guitar with a more uh, classic sort of Stefan Carpenter look to it. I love the green finish. Overall, it's an amazing guitar. Definitely check out my extended demo review video for more sounds and information on this guitar. The next guitar in my collection is the Schechter SLS C1P guitar. So it's the passive version. I think SLS stands for the Slimline series or something because the neck is very skinny smooth and very fast. It has Seymour Duncan pickups in it, a shred in the bridge position, and a 59 in the neck, not entirely sure, or a jazz something. Either way, they sound great. This one sounds very big and aggressive. Cool sounding pickup for sure. It has a coil split thingy. And this guitar has a satin black finish, so it feels very smooth in the hand. It's a very well-built guitar. Locking tuners. 25 and a half inch scale, so uh, it's great for standard tuning or you know your regular down tuned tunings. I have this set to drop C or standard D. Yeah, 
Overall, it's a great guitar that I don't really use often. I'm not sure why, but I do have it up for sale at the moment. So maybe it will be gone soon, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, either way, I'll have this up on the channel very soon because I need to create some riffs with it. Just as a very cool, sleek and black looking guitar, ebony fretboard, you know, to round off the black finish and this cool sort of aged yellow binding. So yeah, cool guitar. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is my ESP LTD Kirk Hammett KH602 guitar. Very solid guitar. At this point, this is the only guitar in my collection that has a tremolo or a Floyd Rose, but it's a very stable tremolo. It stays in tune very well. Uh, we all know Kirk Hammett, of course. This guitar has EMG pickups in it. It's a neck through guitar as well. Maple neck and alder body wings, two volume controls, one tone control, three-way selector switch, a very fast playing neck, but it's quite comfortable. It's not too flat. It's kind of round, but uh, still very skinny. So it's great to play for leads and stuff like that. And the jumbo frets really help with that as well. It's got this cool reversed LTD headstock, rosewood fretboard with these sort of skull inlays over here for that classic Kirk Hammett look. Uh, yeah, overall it's a very solid and stable guitar. As I said, the, the tremolo stays in tune very well. It sounds uh, kind of uh, tight and chunky. It has a great sound, it plays great. What else can I say? All right, now we're gonna check out my Paul Reed Smith or PRS guitars. And we're gonna start off with my heavily customized Mike Mushock Baritone. Because they don't make these in this black finish, someone repainted this guitar they put a new bridge on it. They put a new bridge pickup in it. They made this uh, cutaway over here because normally it has a flat top. They put black tuners on here as well. And they made this guitar look pretty badass. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a fine guitar. It's not really heavy, but it sounds great and it plays great as well. The frets are good and the body wood is good. And these PRS baritones have a scale length of 27.7 inches long, which is great for tunings like B flat, or a drop A flat, which is where I'm at with all my baritone guitars. And as I said, with all my guitars, I have elixir strings on this. What I like to do with my baritone guitars is put an elixir baritone set on here, but I do replace the fourth string with a wound G string. So it's not a G string, but you know what I mean? Uh, because the plain 0.22 string that comes in those baritone sets is a bit too skinny for me. So I like to put a wound 0.24 on there. So uh, that's a great set of strings for these six string baritone guitars. And yeah, this is a DiMarzio pickup. This is the deactivator pickup actually. And this one has a great sound to it. Kind of snarly and plenty of clarity and punch. Uh, I really recommend this pickup for baritone guitars. It's a really cool sounding pickup. This is just the stock uh, neck pickup. So yeah, heavily customized, as I said, a very uh, sort of medley and sleek look. I must say that I am a huge fan of the Silver Burst model, so I really want to get one of those one day. Maybe someone will trade his Silver Burst for this black one, because I do prefer the look of the Silver Burst, but for now this one will do just fine. It's a very cool guitar. What else can I say? Let's move on to the next one. All right, this is my PRS SE277 baritone guitar. This was the first PRS baritone that I got actually, and I loved this one so much that I had to get my other ones as well. This one has a more traditional look with this sort of sunburst finish, maple top. Uh, this one does have a sort of curved top uh, as opposed to the Mike Mushuk, which has a flat top. So it's, it has a bit more of that uh, traditional PRS design going on. Nice bird inlays, rosewood fretboard, uh, set neck and also elixir strings on it. Uh, I really like this guitar, it sounds great. The wood is very high quality. It's very resonant and punchy sounding. Uh, it plays great, so the frets are very nice and level, so the action is very low, which I really like. Uh, this one is also tuned to B flat standard or drop A flat. And I did put some new pickups in this guitar. These are the Marchio pickups, uh, these are the Petrucci pickups, so this is the Crunch Lab and the liquefier in the neck. Very hot sounding pickup, kind of scooped, great for metal and stuff like that. And we've also got the coil split or coil tap thing going on here. So yeah, I can highly recommend these models. They don't make this one anymore, at least not with this finish. 
but it's just one of the, the most solid baritone models that you can get in the market right now, in my opinion, if you like the shape of the uh, PRS Nex, because it's kind of round, but it's still uh, fast enough for fast playing and stuff like that. So overall, a great guitar, plays great, sounds great, looks amazing. What's not to love? Okay, so time for another PRS baritone guitar, but this is a very special and unique guitar, as you can see. It has a semi-hollow design, and this one is equipped with P90 style pickups, so it has a very unique sound to it. I bought this one at Anderton's for a nice price, uh, like a year or two ago. Really happy with this guitar. It's, uh, as I said, it's very unique sounding, and it's great, especially for clean and crunchy stuff, but it's also kind of cool for high gain stuff as well. These pickups have a very interesting sound, I think, especially for baritone guitars. They have a lot of mids. So uh, yeah, that's why they work great for crunchy and clean stuff. But it has a very unique sound and the, the semi hollow design definitely contributes to that. I really like the top on this one. It looks very gorgeous. Yeah. In the hand, it feels similar to the other baritone that I just showed you. But obviously, uh, sound wise, it's very different and very unique. If you're looking for a baritone with a very unique and uh, elegant sound, I can highly recommend checking these out. Very cool and unique guitars. All right, next up is my Paul Reed Smith USA SC58 guitar that I showed you guys in my new metal guitar tone video with the rectifiers. This is really an amazing guitar. I traded my Ibanez uh, RGT320Z, the, the pink Ibanez for this model a couple of weeks ago. And I couldn't be happier. It's, uh, it has been used, but it's still in great shape. It sounds great, it plays great. It's everything that you'd hope for for an American-built Paul Reed Smith guitar. And this definitely is one of the more classic sounding guitars in my collection. It has these uh, 5708 pickups in it, and those are based on vintage style PAF pickups. So they have a very vintage sound, but they do work well for high gain stuff as well, luckily. And this one has the more classic stop till bridge design with the brass saddles. And uh, yeah, it's a gorgeous guitar overall. I'm definitely gonna use this a lot more on the channel as well. Just a very, very cool guitar. Very classic and uh, very classy. I love this guitar for many reasons. It's definitely one of my favorites at the moment. All right, and now the final PRS guitar for my collection. I also got this one a couple of weeks ago the day before I got the other PRS to be exact and I actually traded one of my PRS baritones for this one I had the red one as well the SC277 in red I just didn't use that one quite often but it was a great guitar but this one um, yeah I've been looking at this model for quite a while this is the Zach Myers model it's also a semi hollow guitar uh, with a couple of cool features um, such as this bridge with the brass saddles for more sort of twangy sound and uh, I did put these pickup covers on there myself because I'm not a huge fan of the zebra pickups but overall this is a very very nice guitar it has a satin neck so it plays very smoothly it has this gorgeous flamed maple top with a green finish semi hollow body obviously which really contributes to the unique tone of this guitar so this guitar is very resonant and open sounding with plenty of body and girth to it. Great for clean and crunchy stuff, but also very cool for high gain stuff, but a little bit unique sounding, which is uh, quite cool. I'm gonna feature this in my videos very soon, so stay tuned for that. But overall, I'm very impressed with the quality, again, on this PRS guitar. To be honest, the PRS SE guitars are just amazing. I couldn't be happier. The, the next the frets are nice and level, they play great, they sound great, the electronics are fine. What's not to love, basically? I really, really, really like this guitar. All right, let's move on. All right, this is my ESP LTD Deluxe Phoenix 1000 guitar. Very unique and very cool guitar that I'm super happy with. I got this a couple months ago and I showed you guys this guitar in one of my recent videos, I think. But yeah, it's just an amazing guitar with a really unique look. Neck through design as well, you guys know that I love that. Mahogany body wings, a scale length of 25 and a half inches long, so that's longer than the scale length of a Les Paul. Uh, Seymour Duncan pickups with a coil split. This one is actually a Fat Cat pickup, which kind of a, it's kind of a P90 style pickup. It has a great tone for clean and crunchy stuff. And this one is a humbucker pickup. This is the custom 
It's a very versatile pickup, great for crunchy stuff, but also great for high gain stuff. And the coil split on that pickup actually sounds very nice. This one was built in Indonesia, but the build quality is just great overall. They used high quality woods, so it sounds great, nice and resonant. It plays amazingly well. The frets are very nice and very smooth. Got locking tuners going on and a classic but unique look. Oh man, I really, really love this guitar. You'll be seeing a lot more of this guitar on the channel soon, I promise. All right, next up is my ESP LTD EC401B. This is my baritone Eclipse guitar. Uh, another unique guitar in my collection. It's just your standard ESP LTD Eclipse, but with a long scale length of 27 inches long. So great for low tunings, obviously. This one is also tuned to B flat or drop A. And the scale length of 27 inches is just fine for me for baritone guitars. Uh, with six string baritones, I never really go lower than A flat, drop A flat. So it's, it works out uh, just fine for me. This one has a mahogany body, rosewood fretboard. Uh, just as with all my ESP LTDs, the frets are great, nice and level, so the action is nice and low. Uh, this one is equipped with uh, EMG pickups, an 81 in the bridge and a 60 in the neck. The 60 in the neck is great for clean stuff, actually. And this one, obviously, is great for your, uh, you know, your low-end chugs. Um, yeah, just a very solid baritone guitar. They don't make these anymore. They do make the... The Vipers, I think, so those are the kind of the, the SG models. But this one just had a very cool look. So just before they stopped making these, I had to get one. And I'm super happy with it, uh, actually. And I also need to use this one more on the channel. And I will, I promise. But yeah, it sounds great. It plays great. Really cool guitar, super happy. Let's move on to the next one. The next guitar in my collection is my Fender American Special Stratocaster that I've had for quite some years now. This obviously has a very classic design. It does have the large Fender headstock, which is kind of cool looking in my opinion. Maple neck and a maple board, obviously. And this really cool uh, green finish, it looks really cool. And uh, I use this one for all my classic clean stratty sounds, obviously. This one has the Texas Special pickups in it. They sound quite cool. Not the most standard Strat sound, but great for those kind of Hendrixy or Stevie Ray Vaughan type things. Overall, the quality in this guitar is very nice. The body wood is nice and resonant and it has plenty of weight. So it's a great sounding guitar. The frets are nice. They're nice and level. Overall, a very solid Stratocaster that I really love. And I'm not going to get rid of this guitar anytime soon. All right, let's move on to the next guitar. This is my ESP LTD Iron Cross James Hetfield signature model. It's uh, just kind of your uh, ESP LTD Eclipse but with some unique features such as this racing stripe over here and this iron cross and this uh, cool sort of uh, Les Paul custom type look with uh, bindings on the front and on the back. But it has this cutaway over here, which is uh, quite comfy. And it has the headset pickups, which are very hot and huge sounding pickups. Very cool. And of course, it has the selector switch over here instead of here. So this one is just a dummy. This doesn't work. And we've got an ebony board, uh, black locking tuners, a very, very cool guitar. As soon as ESP and James Hetfield came out with this guitar, I just knew that I had to have it because it's just such a unique and cool looking guitar that I really, really like. It sounds great. It plays great. The neck feels uh, great. It feels a little bit different than my other Eclipses. They all feel a little bit different from one another for some reason, but they all feel quite similar and very comfortable in the hand. So very cool guitar with a modern sound. It does not sound like a Gibson Les Paul at all, in my opinion. It sounds like a metal guitar with active pickups, obviously. But yeah, uh, it's a guitar that I really enjoy. Um, and I should use this one more often on the channel as well. So this was my ESP LTD Iron Cross James Hetfield signature model. Okay, next up is this ESP LTD EC1000T. So this is uh, quite similar to the previous guitar. Uh, this one is also an Eclipse. And this one has the full thickness body. So it's very nice and thick, just as the classic Les Pauls. And that's a feature that I really, really enjoy about this guitar. Again, an ebony board, same scale length. So 24.75 inches long, if I'm correct. So yeah, similar features to the previous guitar, mahogany body, ebony board, very comfortable neck, very comfortable to play. 
golden locking tuners on this guitar, golden EMG pickups on this one as well to give it a more classic look. This one initially came with the black uh, EMG pickups, an 81 and an 85 or a 60. I'm not sure if I remember that correctly, but I replaced those with the 57 and the 66, I think. So uh, yeah, it fits the look of this guitar a bit better. It looks more classic, but it still sounds like a modern beast, basically. Golden hardware, three-way selector switch. The neck feels great in the hand as well. The frets are nice and level, so the action is nice and low. It sounds really nice and full, a very thick sounding guitar. I really love this guitar. Let's move on to the next one. The next guitar is my Line 6 Variax JTD 59 guitar. So it's your Line 6 Variax in this Les Paul type body. It's a very cool guitar actually. This one was also built in Korea. So the, the sound and build quality is really good actually. Uh, the, the wood is great and the neck feels great. It's a very chunky neck, so a very classic uh, neck design. But uh, I like the feel of this in my hand. Rosewood board, flame maple uh, veneer over here. And of course, we've got the Variax technology in here, which is very cool. You can do uh, other tunings and choose your type of guitar. You can even get Strat sounds or 12 string guitars or sitar sounds of this, out of this guitar, which of course is very unique and it sounds pretty cool, pretty convincing. But I don't tend to use the modeling tech very often because the basic pickups in this guitar actually sound very good. So usually I just play this guitar with the standard pickups because overall it's just a very, very nice sounding, a very nice looking and a great playing guitar. It has all this technology inside, but for some reason that does not take away the great sound of this uh, beautiful instrument. So a very cool guitar indeed. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next guitar. This guitar has been one of my workhorse guitars over the past few years. And this one is actually an ESP LCD Elite Eclipse 1, which means that this one was built in Japan actually. So this is kind of more like your Japanese built ESP guitars, only it came under the LCD Elite name. It was a, a short run of guitars, I think before the E2 series came out. But yeah, it's a very nice guitar. It obviously has that more classic Les Paul look to it with this beautiful flamed maple top. Seymour Duncan pickup, so a JB in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. Great sounding combo. This guitar sounds very punchy, articulate and tight, which is very cool. And uh, we've got this rosewood board over here, mahogany body of obviously and a mahogany neck. And like I said, this is just one of those workhorse guitars for that more classic Les Paul sound, but with a bit more of a sleeker feel and it sounds a bit more tight as well because my Gibson Les Paul, which we'll get to in a minute, sounds a bit bigger and it has a bit more of that classic Les Paul sound. But this one has a bit more of a modern design with locking tuners, the skinny neck and the uh, overall ESP aesthetics. So yeah, a very nice guitar indeed that I love to play. All right, so this is my Gibson Les Paul. This is my Gibson Les Paul Classic from 2015 to be exact. And this is one of those guitars that a lot of people seem to hate because of the, uh, the Les Paul signature logo over here. I don't know, for some reason people really dislike that. And originally it did come with those robot tuners, but uh, they're not on here anymore. And the brass nut has been replaced with a more standard nut, but you can still uh, change the height, which is actually quite convenient. But yeah, this guitar is really nice. I mean, it plays great. The neck is a little bit wider than usual. That's also something that people dislike. I can kind of understand why, but after a couple of minutes of playing, I'm already used to it. So it feels great in the hand and it sounds really nice. I mean, this one has that really classic Les Paul sound. It's one of the best sounding Les Pauls that I've ever owned, to be honest. Uh, this one has the Super 57 pickup in the bridge and the classic 57 pickup in the neck. I really love those pickups. Especially the bridge pickup is just great for classic and modern rock tones. And this one also has a sort of boost built in, so you can get a 15 decibel boost or something. It's kind of a fun feature, but I don't really use that to be honest. I just like to keep it a little bit more traditional. Yeah, I think this guitar looks really nice. And like I said, it plays like a dream and it sounds absolutely amazing. So I'm super happy with this guitar for that classic Gibson Les Paul sound. Um, this one did have the Zebra pickups. As I said earlier, I'm not a fan of the Zebra pickups, so I also put some covers on here. Looks a bit more classic to me. 
yeah, super nice guitar. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is my ESP LTD NW44 Neil Westfall signature model. Definitely one of my favorite guitars at the moment. A really, really cool guitar in terms of looks, in terms of features. It sounds great, it plays great, and it looks very simple and elegant. It has that kind of Gibson Les Paul custom look, but with just with a single bridge pickup, one control, you know, golden hardware. And this one has a scale length of 25 and a half inches. So that's a bit longer than your standard Eclipse scale length. So it's great for down tuning. So I have this one tuned to drop C and D standard. Um, and this pickup is great as well. This is my only guitar with a bare knuckle pickup in it. And I think this is the Aftermath model. It just sounds very nice, very clear, very thick and punchy. Not clear in your Seymour Duncan kind of way, but uh, really hard to explain, but um, it just has a very, very cool sound to it. I really recommend checking out these pickups. Overall, the quality on this guitar is just great. It plays amazingly well. And I just really love the simplicity and elegance just with that one pickup design. So I really, really enjoy the heck out of this guitar. It's a very stable guitar as well with the locking tuners and stuff like that. And this cutaway is a nice little feature for access of the upper frets. Yeah, so like I said, definitely one of my favorite guitars at the moment. Okay, so we're all done with my electric guitars, but I do have a couple of bass guitars as well. This is my workhorse bass guitar. This is my Sire Marcus Miller V7 bass. And it's an affordable bass, but it's a very high quality bass. It sounds great, actually. It's a very versatile bass with the active controls over here. Um, it's a, it's you know it's a kind of your your uh, Fender jazz bass design, uh, five string obviously. I do like to tune this down sometimes to drop C and stuff like that, and for the baritone stuff as low as A flat, and it can handle that just fine. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, to get a guitar that was kind of uh, like your your Fender jazz bass, but I didn't want to pay as much as as a Fender. So I'm super happy with this Sire. The, overall, the quality is very nice. It's not perfect. It does have some small flaws here and there, but overall it's just a very, very cool guitar. And I use this a lot. I mean, basically all my tracks nowadays feature this bass guitar under it. So a very solid and reliable bass guitar. Very cool, let's move on to my next bass. This is also a very cool bass guitar. This is my Ibanez ATK305 bass, also a five string bass. I used to use this bass guitar a lot on my tracks years ago, but for some reason these days I just prefer to grab my Sire because it's a little bit more consistent and I need to get the frets fixed on this one because they're a little bit uneven in places. But uh, it has a very, very cool sound to it. It's uh, it's one of the hugest sounding bass guitars that I've ever played. It's uh, great for metal and great for stuff like that. Of course it's also versatile, you know, it's great for clean and crunchy stuff as well, but, but it excels at that nasty bass sound which is great for high gain stuff so a very cool sounding and looking bass guitar that i need to get uh you know worked on soon because i need to use this more often so yeah very cool guitar now i also have a couple of acoustic guitars but i don't want to get through those because that's kind of boring in my opinion so those were all my guitars i really hope you enjoyed the tour of my current guitar collection and of course let me know in the comments which guitars were your favorites and why because i'd love to know your thoughts and if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button along with the bell. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Cheers!